Good afternoon. It is Lorraine Brock here with Tip Tuesday, and I have with me Susan Davis, who is one of our organizers here at Get Organized, and we're going to be talking about an organized craft room today. So I'm very excited because I am not an avid crafter, but I do craft, and at different seasons of my life, I've actually crafted um, more often than other seasons, depending on what's going on. So we're actually in Susan's craft room, and I had asked her a few weeks ago, maybe a few months ago, um, could we come in and actually shoot the Tip Tuesday in your craft room? Because I was blown away. And I want to tell this little story. When How long have you been with Get Organized? It'll be five years in the spring. Okay, so five years. And I remember coming in, doing what we call an in-home inspection in our organizers' uh, homes. And I said, just sort of show me your organizing skills. I remember doing that. Right. And I was just blown away. I was like, this is our crafter. She's going to be <laughs> awesome. Um, you just really know, you know how to use products. And then I went into your closet. And one of the awesome things I remember seeing in there is you had this little drawer pullout system. For my earrings. For your earrings. <laughs> and you had, um, I don't even have, but you had all the, think of all the medicine bottle lids. All those vitamins. All I those take. vitamins. <laughs> and she turns them upside down and she puts them in this drawer and puts all her little earrings. I'm like, our clients are going to love you because <laughs> not only are you creative, but if need be, you're frugal. I'm always frugal. I love that. And I mean, who wouldn't like to spend uh, or have a craft room for, you know, $10,000, but it's not necessary. And we've got some great, great tips today about an organized or piecing together an organized craft room. So I'm going to give a, you some time to talk, Susan, and tell us a little bit about why, how long you've been with Good Organized. I know you mentioned that, but then what's your favorite area to organize if you're going into a client's home? Well, clearly, I love doing craft rooms because I get to see other people's crafts and some people who do the same paper crafting kind mm -hmm. of thing that I do. But I also love to cook, and I am an announced dishaholic. So I love doing <laughs> kitchens. I love doing pantries. Uh, master closets are a lot of fun. I love to make those functional and beautiful. And uh, I work in all the areas of the house. The one that I'm, I don't feel the best at and the most skilled at is children's playrooms because my youngest grandchild is 10 now. So mm. while I knew everything that went together 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, I don't know which superhero group this one goes with. You <laughs> it, know. All the superheroes so. change. It used to be Power Rangers yes. for us. And now I don't even think they're like, Power who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the way it goes. <laughs> so that's that's why I don't just jump in to volunteer for playrooms. It's not that I don't like children. I just love them. But I don't know about what they're playing with yeah. right now. And it's really, when you're organizing a kid's playroom, you really need to know the toys that go with other toys. Or otherwise, you're making them disorganized for the client. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm great with children's books. But they're little multi-piece toys, except for Legos. I'm not that great. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So give us, um, share an experience with us where you have gone in for someone. It can be a client of Get Organized mm -hmm. or it could be one of your friends, but where you've gone in and you've organized a craft room and give us an, uh, give the, give our viewers and our fans out there a little idea of, of what goes in, uh, to organizing a craft room. Okay. Well, it's pretty much like, organizing any room, you start by sorting things. And the most challenging and interesting craft room I've done was for a young woman who was beginning in paper crafting, stamping, making greeting cards, which is what I've done for almost 19 years now. And she inherited literally a room full of stamping and paper crafting supplies, including custom built furniture that this lady's husband had had built for her. And she was overwhelmed. The amount of things was just enormous. So our first step was what we always begin with. We were sorting. And uh, one of my coworkers were working with me. And we used every inch of hallway that she had, every inch of floor space in her child's large playroom, which was next door, sorting stamp sets, ink pads, um, punch, paper punches, 
all the tools that we use. Was she a craft? I mean, did she actually was a crafter? She had, she had just started doing paper crafting, okay. so she had a few things of her own. But as I say, I've been uh, making greeting cards and with rubber stamps for almost 19 years, and there were three times as many of everything as I own yet. Did she purge any? Just oh, out she, of curiosity. She purged enormously. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, she we used her guest bathroom, which was adjacent to the stamping room, and she and her mother were both going through. They were looking at things and purging, choosing things to that they could live without while we were still sorting. And she filled the entire bathtub with stamp sets that she didn't want to keep, and she set them aside and had <laughs> had a garage sale a few months later. Okay, then, so she wasn't keeping them in the bathtub. No, that's that, good. That, that that's was, good. That, that was the only space large enough for everything. We don't that recommend she wasn't going to organizing <laughs> products in your bathtub, but in this case, it was a temporary holding spot. Um, yes, because we yeah. were out of space. You were out of space. Upstairs. Yes. <laughs> and the, the girl I was working with is not a crafter, and she was just totally overwhelmed. She couldn't believe that this, anybody could use this much. Yeah. And, uh, but she learned a lot about crafting, and she's done some Good. craft rooms since. You know, one of the, I think one of our uh, newsletters, that we had it we have a, a go newsletter every month that you can subscribe to on our, the homepage of our website and i think a few months back um i mentioned in the section that i write every month i mentioned about having hobbies and how really you can get really cluttered if you don't really watch how many hobbies you actually try to learn or undertake at one time and you obviously you've got the perfect space and we're going to talk about that today but We've seen clients with so many things. They're, they'll, they'll take a class in this, and they'll start buying things for that craft, and then they'll start taking on that hobby, and they never really fully finish learning uh, and actually doing. They just mm -hmm. get excited learning, and then they stop there, and their house gets so full with all these crafts that they're not really taking advantage of, and I see that a lot in people's right. lives. A That's lot. very true. So I'm and really good about myself. I mean, I love to, I like, to, my, my big thing now is cupcake making. Oh, is she good at that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But I, I've got room to improve, but that's my thing. And I'm buying all these supplies and it just, it, it takes more space. I'm like, okay, I need another cabinet to put these in because it is. So um, mm -hmm. anyway, just be aware of that. Try not to take on so many crafts at one time when you really have limited space. True, and we all have limited space. They may be different sizes, That's but they are, a room is a finite place. <laughs> There's only so much you can fit into it without, what I say to my clients sometimes is you reach a point where your belongings own you instead of you owning them. Mm -hmm. and you spend all your time trying to corral everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that defeats the purpose of hobby, which is supposed to be relaxing and pleasant. That's right. And many of us do more than one thing in a room. I was telling Lorraine a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. I also sew in this room. I don't make any attempt to create anything that would fit a human body, but I do still make a few. I love, good. To, I love to decorate. We're not. And I do. We're not, we don't have a criminal here, so we're good. We're good. And I do uh, make throw pillows and things like that from time to time, and I do my mending. So. So I have sewing supplies in here and fabrics in here, as well as stamping. Now, you were talking to me earlier, and this was a real big passion of yours, about people not waiting to do a craft room until Absolutely. it's perfect. So Absolutely. talk to us about that. Okay. If you enjoy a craft, any kind of crafting, chances are that you've gone to Pinterest or uh, you've looked in crafting magazines, and you've seen pictures of fabulous craft rooms where people have had custom-built uh, cabinetry, custom-built work tables. Uh, it's beautiful. It's organized. It's also extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. And Lorraine mentioned that I'm thrifty. I'm thrifty because my parents lived through the Depression. My generation uh, was just as deeply affected by the Depression, I think, as, as our parents were because they focused on using your resources in the very best way that you could. So Creative problem solving is something that's always yeah. been important in my family. And I found a lot of ways to build a craft room for myself that has worked very well and did not cost a fortune. Yeah. And I'll be talking to you about some of those today. Fun I'm that sitting I've done. right in front of something. Yeah, you can't see it right now, but I'm sitting <laughs> right in front. And don't tell them. Okay. This thing that's right in front of me, uh, when she talked to me about this via email, I was like, 
I can't picture what she's talking about, but then I come in and see it. And you know what? When I first saw it, it looked like a product you would buy at the store that was made of acrylic. I never would have thought it was whatever it is. Um, and you're going to get to see that here shortly. So, all right, Susan, well, let's get to tip number one. Uh, and I'm going to let you take the first three tips and then I'm going to close this out with tip number four. We have okay. four great tips today about your craft room. So tip number one, Susan, take it away. I think for whatever your craft is, you've got to be able to see what you're doing. So good lighting is absolutely essential and full spectrum lighting like that provided by Ot Lights is what I would recommend. Uh, they're sold in craft stores. Craft stores often have 50% off coupons, and mm -hmm. that's the time to buy them. They come in a number of different styles, and as we move around my room a little bit, you may see a few of them. All of them are ugly, but the light they produce is beautiful. And uh, OTT O -T -T is the brand name that I'm familiar with. There are probably some other full-spectrum lights available out there, but this one is readily available and fairly expensive, which is why I recommend the 50% off coupons. Now, are those also tall lamps and also desk lamps? So they they're, come in all shapes and they're sizes? They're available as desk lamps and floor lamps. Uh, I have one uh, that's a floor lamp as well. Okay, good, And good. I think I have, I have four of the, of the tabletop ones in this room. Okay. I also have an up light in one corner and uh, an overhead light with my ceiling fan. So yeah, really good lighting. Good lighting here. is terrific good and lighting. important. We brought in some more lighting for Tip Tuesday, but it's really good lighting. I mean, seriously, for what you have. You have. Okay, tip number two from Susan. Uh, it's all about furniture. Take it away. The thing that I wanted to say about seeing all those rooms is that it makes you want a perfect craft room. And I'm going to say if you if you have the, the itch to do a craft, a, a, a pleasure and enjoyment in a craft, don't wait until that time when the time is perfect and you can create a perfect craft room. Uh, start small. If the only space you have available is a corner in a room, maybe a corner in a guest room that's seldom used, and you set up a card table for your craft, go ahead and do it. Give yourself the luxury and the joy of getting to be creative instead of waiting and waiting. Mm -hmm. For an awful lot of us, having a craft, a room devoted to crafts doesn't happen until our children grow up and move away. And for me, that was true. The room we're sitting in right now was my son's bedroom. The one that is now my office was my other son's bedroom. But as soon as the hazmat people were through getting them <laughs> back to reality, I was able to convert them easily. Cleaning a bunch of their beds and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we don't need to go into that. But, uh, you know, don't wait for perfection because it takes a long time to get there. And uh, start small, but start. Yeah, you had not. You had a good idea about um, for types of furniture. So talk to us about you know what's the most important piece because we're you know we're still in tip number two. Mm -hmm. What's the most important piece to have? And then I want you to talk about what's over here. Now I'm not showing you guys the product yet that I'm talking about in front of me. But over here is some other furniture that I'm going to switch the camera around in a minute. So okay. talk to us about, about the most important piece. Okay. A work table of some sort. Uh, for almost any craft, you're going to need that. And uh, the one that I have is uh, quite large. It's about six feet by three and a half feet. And it was dining table height. Uh, and I've raised it up on bed risers, which I think are wonderful because I like to work a lot mm -hmm. uh, standing up instead of sitting down. Uh, that's uh, nice. I was lucky enough to find a table that has two big drawers built into the side of the table apron. If you happen to find one, perhaps at an estate sale, as I did, or perhaps in an unfinished furniture store, those drawers are a real plus for the things that you use really frequently, need to grab, and are small and need organization. This looks like a dining table almost. Well, I, you know, it may very well be built see it as, in a second, it guys. It may have been built as a dining table. It had belonged to an artist who uh, had a little shop at Ola Pudrida uh, years earlier. and But she had taken it home, and it was it was her home. It was great. It was in her home. But it looks like it, like it fits in here like a glove. It means that not only it the does. look of it, but the function. Um, and then she mentioned, you mentioned about the, the risers. Now, the risers, we'll show you in a second that you have on here. They're black, like the table's black. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can get those for $10 or under at Ikea. You can get them at Bed Bath & Beyond. If you happen to have a wooden table, uh, they have wooden risers at Bed Bath & Beyond. Right. 
They're a little bit shorter. A little than bit what shorter. I yeah, and so you need to look at the height. There's definitely a height uh, on some of them. The the black ones at IKEA are probably the the tallest ones. Though Container Store has some as well. So I like that because it makes it. Like you said, it, well, it just makes it where you, you can have a bar stool or you can stand up and do your work. Right. And you know that standing desks have become very popular. Mm -hmm. And the uh, research seems to show that you use a few more calories standing up than you do sitting down. So, you know, <laughs> any, any way to make that happen, I like to take advantage of. As I'm drinking my Starbucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or my coffee with almost as much milk in it as there yeah. is coffee. Yeah. Uh, the furniture across the room that Lorraine was mentioning oh, is yeah. I'm going to turn this around where okay. you guys can see. Go ahead and keep talking, All right. Susan. Uh, I, I know this, the center bookcase that you're going to see, I purchased for my daughter to keep her Barbie dolls on. She's 41 now and doesn't really use those a lot. So it, it came to me. Uh, the one to the left of it, the tall skinny one, was from an estate sale. The pieces on the other side, I'm almost embarrassed to admit, on the right... I was driving down the street uh, that's along the side of my house and someone actually tossed a, the, a couple of shelves into a pile on the corner as I was going by. And so I braked immediately and asked, are you throwing those away? And he said, yes, do you need some? I've got a whole bunch of them. And I said, yes, I am an organizing freak. And this is before I was a professional organizer. I would love to have them. And I stacked up several of those shelves and I put a shelf on top. And they all work together. That's awesome. But my best tip is if you have bookcases, and if they happen to have the little holes drilled in the side for adjustability, add some extra shelves if you need them. In the one that she's aiming at now, you'll see lots of stamp sets. And in different kinds of packaging, because that's changed through the years, those are the, the thing that is in the middle there that looks dark. Those are paper punches. Um, this was these were standard bookshelves with a lot of space in between the shelves and there was a lot of wasted space and I had a lot of little skinny things I needed to store. So I went to one of the big box home improvement centers where they carry white laminated shelves. I took my measurements with me, had them cut to size, bought a few more little pegs and created custom shelving for me, uh, which has worked just beautifully. That is awesome. And I'm looking, I'm going to point right up here, but you can see normally shelves aren't that close together. And you, like you said, you've just gone to the Home Depot or Lowe's. Mm -hmm. They're already laminate. You don't have to paint them. The Obviously they have these pegs, the holes in the side, and you've added so much more shelving that doesn't normally come with a shelf. Right. To really maximize space. And it's not very expensive at all. Uh, another thing that you may not be able to tell. Uh, I, in one of the ones that we've got there, they didn't have shelving at, let's see, what it was, it was different. I, I raised, I mean, needed a certain height and I raised it up with pieces of the shelving that they had cut off that were left over. And those are what are at the edges, right above those baskets. I'm talking about a shelf that I did. That so way. right right over, let me get this finger, a finger, right over in here. Yes. And at this end, there those little white pieces on the end are actually boards or yes. more shelves that are smaller. Yes. And one of them had two raw edges. So I just covered the raw edge of one of them with a piece of white paper. Uh, and there's, they support another shelf. They give me just exactly the spacing I want as though I had had a custom built cabinet done and uh, work beautifully for that. I've done something on the other uh, unit where all those cards are displayed. I didn't happen to have any scrap left from the shelves, but I had some pieces of about inch and a half wide styrofoam. And yeah, styro styrofoam adds absolutely no weight to anything, but does it's very sturdy and it's supporting a shelf too. So creativity, yeah. thinking outside the box and willing to you know be unconventional uh, can save you a lot of money, give yeah. you a really good feeling of satisfaction that you came up with something yeah. and, uh, and provide more customized shelving than you would get when you went to a store. And I want to I add on to the end of that is that when you're doing any room, especially a craft room, when there's a lot of little things, oh my gosh, yes. you <laughs> need to go up the wall as much as possible. Try not to get all short shelving uh, because obviously the higher you can go gives you more storage space. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, you want it to be reachable for you, mm -hmm. but you really need to consider 
not using everything just at the waist high. Right. You really need to use use your wall space as much as possible. Another tip I could give you that this is a great time for is uh, particularly if you're doing your crafting in a room that has another use too. Say it's a guest bedroom part of the time and you'd like it to be attractive. There is a wealth of uh, furniture available at stores like Salvation Army these days mm. that are armoires that were entertainment armoires. And they worked beautifully for the, those gigantic 200-pound, 36-inch TVs, ah. but they don't work at all for HD TVs. So people are giving them away in droves, and they are very inexpensively priced. They probably cost originally around $600 or so, and you can almost always find some for under $100. They have a lot of space inside that you can customize in the same way I did those, or you can put in little three-drawer plastic drawer units Lots of different like ways. Like the Sterilite drawers. Yes, yeah, exactly. The Sterilite. We, Sterilite's the name brand. They have off name brands as well. But those units come in really small, you know, and then they go even higher. Mm -hmm. And I have a number of them in here. Some of them are right yeah. behind and us. We're going to get to see them. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about tip number three. And this is going to be um, about really small storage. Am I correct? Right. And we're going to actually take the camera around. So I may be flipping the camera back and forth a little bit to give you guys an idea. So I'm going to, let's get up and sort of take, All you right. sort of talk about what's going on in your space. Bear with us here. We're hooked up to microphones. So we're going to sort of walk around. Okay, Susan. All right. When I talked about thinking outside the box, there are some things that are not designed for a specific use, but if you see that they'll work, use them. And here on my wall, I have uh, some towel bars. This particular one is no longer available at Ikea. I wish I'd known I would have gotten some more, but, they, but you can find towel bars in many stores. And this is a great way to store paper punches. Uh, this is the, a style that's been around for years and has largely been replaced by this type, but it works for both of them. And uh, I, I ran out of space here, so that's why you saw some punches on shelves across the room. I'm going to move this. But you actually have three on the wall I here. Have, I have three of them right here, and they work wonderfully. A small secondary table is a nice thing to have, too, When we that back to furniture, and that's what this is. Down below the work surface on it is where I have the Sterilite drawers, and uh, it's, it's very handy. I have a label coming up. There we go. Uh, this has, has drawers in it where I store other things, and these drawers hold a wealth of things. Probably, for me, the most extensive uh, storage that I have for small I'm gonna items. I'm going to switch places with you over here, Okay. and we'll go around this way, and I'm going to get... Is in this piece, and not everybody's going to be able to find one of these. Uh, I happened to be able to get this at a garage sale at our church when we were moving to a new church building years ago. And a lovely lady had left in her will a large endowment for new Sunday school furniture. So they had a garage sale. And so for a very low price, I got this piece that had held puzzles and books and toys. Uh, I'm just talking about the top. Oh, right the now. top. Okay, okay. I'm just scanning <laughs> all of it. For in a child in a child's a Sunday school room. And for me, it has worked beautifully. We talked about little things and storage for for small items. Here, for example, is a cutlery tray that stores sponges that I use for adding certain color to, to cards. Uh, here's another one. And I have glitters and chalks and blending pens, that sort of thing in it. All of these are pieces that I came across somewhere. I didn't necessarily go to a store. Obviously, I did not go to a store and buy them all at once. Uh, but I've used them. They work wonderfully for me. This open space, I didn't really know what to do with until in a thrift store one day, I found this little cabinet. I stamped a little thing in the middle that looks like a, a chalkboard and Look at this. Just a little thing like that. Look how much storage that provided for me of little tiny things. And it's oh, cute. And I like awesome. cute. <laughs> well, what is, um, don't forget that thing over there on that table in front of us before. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> uh, here's something that you find from time to time, again, in thrift stores. This was designed for holding cassette tapes. 
when's the last time you listened to a cassette tape? But it's wonderful for ribbon, and ribbons are used a lot uh, in decorating cards. So I have, I have two of them, and in fact I have a third one that I didn't even have enough ribbon to fill, but it supports my recycling bin over here to just the right height <laughs> next, to my, <laughs> next to where I do my paper Until cutting. you're ready for it somewhere else. Yes, exactly. Uh, this is another product that I love to use. These are clear acrylic box frames. Uh, you buy them as picture frames. Uh, they have a white cardboard insert that just fits them and that holds your picture in. But they make fabulous trays for sorting things. And if you have things on shelves that are, are deeper uh, than, than easily reachable, or if they're on skinny shelves like these, it's wonderful to have something on a tray that you can pull out. And I've used a lot of those, and they're not terribly expensive. Uh, here's another little tip about pulling things out. These are embossing powders, which I use, and I have more of them than I could get on the front facing. So I used some old uh, shoebox lids so that I could put a second stack of them behind, and I turned the label on it sideways so that when I pull it out, and I'm standing over there at that work table, I can see what, which color of embossing powder it is instead of having it just behind here and marked on this side like these. Well, I'm noticing a theme here, repurposing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> totally a theme of repurposing I, because everything you guys just, just saw here, I don't know that you've bought anything. Well, I mean, you bought, you bought that one little piece right here, but... Oh, well, I, I bought you made the it organizer, work. and I, I, you know, I bought each of these things at some point, but an awful lot of them... Very, very inexpensive one right. because I, I shopped for years at estate sales. That is awesome. I think I like the cassette tape idea the best. It works great. That is, so let's just start selling all the cassette tape holders and I bet you can make some money if you throw in a picture of how you can use it like by repurposing it. So and, and, um, give us one more tip before we talk about okay. that one. Well, you also need drawer storage for the things that you don't want out in the open and that you're not reaching for every day. I mentioned that I also sew in this room. Another thing I do, I would like to call it jewelry making, but the truth is it's more collecting things for jewelry making. But the shallow drawers on this dresser hold beads and tools for jewelry making. The lower drawers, uh, the bottom two, are where I keep all of my gift wrap. And this was something I found at an estate sale and thought, I believe that's about the same size as my great wow. organizer. It was perfect. I was lucky. Wow. But there That's are right. options everywhere. I have another dresser over here that I use for countertop space for cutting paper and scoring paper and uh, embossing paper with shapes. Uh, I have a knot light on it, and this one swivels. So it can be used for my paper trimmer if I swivel it to the right and for my paper scorer or my big shot uh, tool if I swivel it to the left. So that's oh, that is awesome. That's another that's class. awesome. All right, so I wanted to switch it over there to you, and I'm going to let you talk about this last one before we get to my tip number four. Okay. Okay. This is the organizer that Lorraine was talking about, and this is kind of the ultimate repurposing. I have a group of ladies who come once a month to make cards, and they take turns being hostess. My hostess brought a fruit tray that day, and when I was rinsing it off to put into recycling, thought. I believe I could use that. <laughs> and I use this every single day that I'm in this room. I have so many different things here, stamp cleaners, uh, little sanding blocks, various adhesives. That is so cool. I, I love it. I did have to place it on a good quality turntable and I put a little bit of a rubber drawer liner on there so it wouldn't slip and slide around on the turntable. But uh, a good a good quality turntable that moves real easily. So this is the just shop. like what you would, if you ordered a fruit tray from Kroger or the grocery yes. store. This is just the actual fruit tray. They normally have a black bottom that fits on top of it, is that, or some kind of clear. I this, this one had a clear, clear little pull just off. like that. Yes. Wow. But uh, and I have another one, a little bit smaller one in a kitchen cabinet that I keep some of my spices and my little shaker of flour for flouring cake pans and uh, wow, really my cinnamon like and sugar for making cinnamon toast and stuff. Uh, it's a little bit smaller because the cabinet is smaller and 
you know. That is cool. And I like that you, you've actually put other types of containers in here to hold groupings of smaller things, including reading glasses and brushes and rulers. So I really, really like that. Boy, well, Susan, you. that's impressive. Thank you. And it's not easy to find things that fit well into circular, into round spaces. But when you put a glass in it, it'll hold tall, skinny things. Yeah. So that is awesome. So that's awesome. What with that. All right. Well, let's get to tip number four. And uh, that is so impressive. We're going to get seated back here. Oh, did I lose my microphone? No. <laughs> I, I need to pick up when the you're, cord, when, though. Yeah, we are, when we are all over the place okay. on um, this room today, look, giving lots of great ideas. Okay, so I'm going to talk about tip number four, my tip. Okay. And um, mine's sort of really simple. It's not really quite as impressive as yours. <laughs> so um, I think last week on Tip Tuesday... We talked about uh, using a shoe organizer, those plastic shoe organizers on the wall for various different things. And so many times I have gone into a client's home. In fact, one was a girl who was, I think she was at a Dallas uh, private school maybe, but Booker T. Washington, I think it was an okay. art. They're heavy into art. Like an arts magnet school. Yes. And she was doing everything from uh, chalks to paints and everything ar around that type of art. And we put a shoe or organizer on her wall. She actually painted in her room. So we hung some what would be called monkey hooks or gorilla hooks. Mm -hmm. I looked that up on the internet and you will use these hooks for tons of things. They leave a little bitty tiny hole versus a big hole like from a nail or something. And Love they're easy. <laughs> oh, and they're easy. No tools required. So that, that will be a product we'll show later. But monkey hooks or gorilla hooks. And we actually pushed them into the sheetrock and then hung the shoe organizer on that mm -hmm. because all these paints and stuff were very heavy and her supplies, and we hung them right next to where she would sit down and actually get a canvas out. And tons of products were in it that were all visible for her to see. And she did not have a specific craft room. She had to obviously share that with her with her bedroom space. Mm -hmm. So just a shoe organizer, I would recommend a clear one that you can see through. Uh, you can get these at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, Container Store. Uh, the most expensive is about $15 at Container Store, but mm -hmm. I do really believe the quality is really good. So that's my tip. Nothing compared to Susan's, but nevertheless, it is a tip. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit about who won our, we, last week we gave away a Chick-fil-A $10 mm -hmm. gift card. And Jessica won that from Savoy, Texas. And that will be something that she will get here really soon and enjoy a free lunch on Get Organized. Uh, and by the way, Jessica's my daughter-in-law. So, and I did not give it to her. She earned it by leaving comments. That's how easy it is to win stuff, is leave comments below. And I'll tell you what we're going to give away for this next week. So I'm going to let you pronounce this, Susan, because everyone knows that English is not my first language. But and, really, it is. And but. I'm so fluent in Swedish. This is from <laughs> Ikea. I would call this uh, Dignitat. Dignitat. Okay. Uh, that may be worlds away from right. Okay. So this is a wire system with hooks that you can install on your walls and allow artwork or in your, in your and I'm going to use an example of what you have here. Uh, cards, you can actually, she, Susan makes beautiful stamped cards. Isn't that beautiful? And you can hang anything from your Christmas cards on it to kids artwork to things that need to dry that are, that won't drip obviously, but this is it's a, like a tiny clothesline, a tiny clothesline, but it's made to go in the house and you can sort of see here, um, where it's made sort of really tight, but you can loosen that if you so choose and make it a little bit more swaggy. So we're going to be giving this away. And in order to be in the drawing for this, you have to leave a message down below of what tip you like the most. There were four tips, expanded tips on each one. Which one did you like the most? And if you'll leave a tip, you'll be entered to this and leave a tip through next Sunday night at midnight and you'll be entered into the drawing. 
So let's talk about our Tip Tuesdays tool. Okay. Okay. Now you have a tool and I have a tool. And I just tell, I told Susan, I said, Susan, you pick out any tool that you want to talk about. A tool can be related to what we're talking about Mm -hmm. or it cannot. It can be completely just an organizing product that helps maximize space and get you organized. So I'm going to talk about my tip First, and we're going to grab the box back here. That's it. That's it. I don't know. I'm going to sit right here for a second. And I'm going to grab mine. Okay. And then we'll move that out of the way. If you can grab yours out of there, but don't let them see it. All right. Don't let them see it. Okay. My tip, I actually took out, took out of my drawers in my home. And I have these uh, in a lot of my bathroom drawers, some in my kitchen, but mostly in my bathroom. But these are just little drawer inserts. And I like these because they come in three different sizes. They're very inexpensive, very inexpensive, but yet they're actually a sturdy plastic. Uh, You get them at Walmart in bundles. Normally, I think a bundle of, or two come in a bundle, they're tied together. Uh, maybe two, three for these and, and I think two for these. And what I do, if you have long, shallow drawers, I can put a collection of different ones together to make the entire drawer completely just filled with separators. If you have just a, a long, deep drawer, uh, how deep goes front to back is deep, you may be only able to get two in just like that, which is a lot of my drawers in our bathroom. Um, I've put everything from toothbrushes, toothpaste, uh, deodorant, uh, hairbrushes. Uh, I've used the smaller ones to throw in jewelry. Like if I take my earrings off and I don't want to clean them, I'm a, I'm a, I have a section where I take off my jewelry and I actually clean my earrings before I put it back with my others. And so this is where I throw in all the ones that I might need to, to clean before I get there. So just a really inexpensive drawer organizer. They only come in white. I don't think they come in any other color. Are you aware? At dollar stores, I've seen them in red and blue. Red and blue. Okay. Red I'm and not, blue. I'm not sure that they're the same brand. I think they may be a little flimsier. A little but flimsier. The, the, the design is very similar. And if they're in a drawer, sturdiness is not that important. That's true. Yeah. That's true. They're not because you're not really picking them up and doing anything with them. They're just there to hold and containerize things. So I do like drawer organizers because it does help containerize things. When you open the drawer and things are shifting and rolling around and you throw something in there, that leaves a cluttered drawer for to get even more cluttered. So if you can actually uh, use containers to containerize your products in your drawers, Things stay separated. The paper clips stay with the paper clips. The rubber bands stay with the rubber bands. Your toothbrush and toothpaste stay in their compartment, not mixed with a hairbrush. And <laughs> oh, there's a there, there's a piece of hair in my toothbrush. Uh, that's gross, by the way. To, um, to be avoided at all costs. To be avoided at all costs. And I don't want you to get confused with dental floss. So <laughs> there's just some things you need to keep separated. So really inexpensive way for that. So show us what the other tool was in our Tip Tuesday toolbox. Okay. This may not look like an organizing tool or a crafting tool to you, but maybe you noticed when I was showing you this section over here with all those little trays and things that I use a lot of labels. So my tool that I'm recommending is a good label maker. Uh, It may have looked to you like I went label crazy, my suggestion is that you should go label crazy too, because when you have this many little things, there is no way that if you just make it pretty and leave all these things Mm -hmm. unlabeled, that you're going to remember which one of those trays has which item. So this is a valuable tool for anybody. This one is, I don't think this one's available anymore. They've updated it. They may have a new version of it. I think it has five different sizes of lettering. Uh, Mine has three. And something that I did a long time ago, was put samples of those three sizes on the back. So when I'm working with a client, I can show them the three and ask which one they would like, they'd be most comfortable using. And I may use all three of them in one house. But, you know, if we're doing files, we may use one. If we're doing large trays, we may use another. Uh, the only one in my in this room that I've used the extra large on is the edge of my paper recycling bin over there. I want people to notice it and know where to go put their paper, leftover papers. You know, now that I'm slightly using my reading glasses a little bit more, I don't have to have glasses for very much, but when I'm le- and lighting's important. Exactly. Seriously, and, for and that. And grows more so. And, and grows more so. <laughs> 
So uh, I need to have a lot of light on. But um, I do like the idea of that size on the back because what you just go ahead and do them all extra large if you're around 40. <laughs> Because you're going to need it eventually. And um, just instead of just changing out all those labels, just go ahead and go for the extra large. <laughs> it's going to make it easy for you. You'll save money, save time in the long run. So just my, just another bonus Words tip of there. Wisdom. Words of wisdom. Okay. Um, let's go to... Okay. Now that we've gone through our Tip Tuesday tools uh, in our toolbox of products for this week... Um, I want to home in on a service for Get Organized that is really timely is our Get Organized gift certificate. So if you are looking for a very unusual but unique gift for maybe your wife or your husband or your mom or maybe your children uh, that are in their own homes, think about getting them some professional organizing service, even a gift certificate for an in-home consultation. What happens is one of our organizers, and it it could be Susan, will actually come in and they'll go room by room looking at ways to maximize space, uh, where systems might be able to be set up for the items the kids' uh, backpacks from school are coming home or kids' school papers or maybe some mail organization and paper clutter. They can come in and actually give you tons of ideas on where to start. And either A, you can implement them yourselves or have us back and we can do a mighty fine job and do it much quicker and in a way probably that's going to blow you away. So think about a gift certificate. Uh, Just call our main office at 972-841-0738 and they can go over sort of how the pricing and the process works. But a gift certificate is a really good, you are like, be like the most unique gift ever at Christmas. I mean, it's totally a different type of gift. Um, Okay, so next tip. Tuesday, we're going to be talking about organized gift wrapping. So I'm going to do the segment by myself next week, and I'm going to show you uh, some professional ways to gift wrap and from pe- professional ways to keep your supplies organized, especially when you put them back in a box and up in the attic every year. Uh, and, and before we go, Susan, we did talk about right before we, w- we went live, we talked about those people that have don't that really don't have the space mm-hmm. to have a craft room to have a lot of stuff. And so in about a minute, give us a little bit of an idea when when you don't really have the room, what's a good tip to have still be able to do some crafts but you don't have a full room to keep your stuff. Well, when I started stamping, my kids were still at home and uh, I had a desk and I had a little stack for for cardstock and a little stack of uh, ink pads and some stamp sets. It was it was not huge, it was not uh, perfect, but it let me do the craft. Mm. And I think if the only space you have to start with is maybe a corner of an unused room or a seldom used room, have a set up a card table if you have to, and. Uh, Put a good lamp on it. Get get that good lighting that we talked about, and uh, give yourself the pleasure of creating. And there's mm-hmm. one other tip that I'd forgotten to mention that I think sure. is quite important. Bonus. Okay. <laughs> My maiden name was Spiller, and I lived up to it. And uh, I can't think of any craft that benefits by having something sp- a beverage spilled on it. So I recommend an unspillable beverage container. I, I will confess to you that I am a heavy drinker of coffee and ice water. And uh, I've had accidents ruin cards before just as they were almost finished. And that's not something you want to have done. So we all like to, you know, <laughs> stay hydrated. Don't just bring a glass of Dr. Pepper or a cup of coffee to your work table because mm, it's an point. accident waiting to happen. Good point. And all that time you spent on doing that craft is now wasted. stained and, and wasted yes so yeah and i remember doing some crafts and i think i was doing what was called stiffy bow making y'all may not even know what that is but we use mod podge and fabric and we formed big old bows and let them dry and then we put them on baskets 
and it looked beautiful. So stiffy bow baskets is one of my main things, but uh, it, even sewing. And I had to keep certain special containers with all these supplies because I didn't do it every day. Like I would bring mm-hmm. it out, you know, maybe twice a year and take over the dining room. The dining room was a great place because we didn't use it very often. Mm-hmm. But I had these portable type of products that held had a handle on them and it would allow me to bring out some of my supplies and then put them up but I was sure not to keep them out all the time because uh, it was too much but having some portable stuff in the in that's in the back of your closet that you can pull out instead of a whole bunch of little containers uh, if you only have the containers go with it but if you can afford some kind of portable product that allows you to bring out everything in like one or two uh, loads that would be much easier and it's all together so all right and, so, and if ahead. you have that card table that i suggested oh, yeah, or a yeah. simple desk those same kinds of portable products can be stored underneath it and they're right there and handy for you to pull out that's right that's right so again next tip tuesday is going to be all about organized gift wrapping i'm going to show you how to professionally do it and also how to organize your supplies and then if you want to be in the drawing for our Dignitat. Dignitat. It's a, a Swedish name that I don't know how to pronounce. It is something from Ikea that you can get to hang up your greeting cards or artwork from your kids or various other things. We're going to be giving this away. You can be entered by leaving a comment down below of your best tip. So watch the entire video and you will be able to be in the drawing and we will announce it on air next Tuesday on Tip Tuesday. So, Susan, thank you for being here. Thank you. It was wonderful. I love all of her repurposed products. So, watch all of this. She has like tons of repurposed. The fruit tray, I think, is my favorite. (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks very much. You guys have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week on Tip Tuesday. Goodbye.